This is my ScanTech 2000 scan mill, which is a rebranded Denford Micro Mill 2000. If you're familiar with the mill inside, it's a Sureline base CNC controlled mill. Since my last video where I got the XYZ axis moving, I have gotten the emergency stop, the limit switches, and control, on off control for the spindle motor. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I can control the spindle via turning on and off the spindle go relay programmatically. And I want to show you some of the safety features that are built into the mill. So there's a magnetic switch here on the plastic guard. If you lift the guard, the spindle motor will stop, although the axes will continue to move. Now, when you turn it back on, when you drop it, it turns back on. If you're cutting something, your axes are moving, spindle's going, you hit the e-stop button, it shuts everything down. So the spindles and the axes don't move. Also, I get a notification on the software side of things that the e-stop was hit. To clear that, I have to undo the e-stop and I have to go into the software and hit reset to clear that in the software, at which point I can then toggle spindle control again or move axes. So those are all built into the mill, and I left them in the way they were because I think they're good safety features. So I have wired the three home switches on each of the three axes up to pins on my breakout board so that I can tell the mill to home, and it'll home all three axes. I have it set to go relatively slowly for that procedure right now. You can see here it's very slowly moving the z-axis up. It'll connect the switch and then back off until it disconnects. And then it will do the y-axis. Followed by the x-axis. So to enable the home switches, and the control of the spindle, I had to add five more wires to my 96-way connector on the Next Move ST board. So these things are numbered and lettered. It's um, three columns, so it's C on the left, B in the middle, and A on the right. The numbers go from 1 to 32, 32 being on the bottom. The emergency stop, I wired up to A25. That's a red wire that's kind of hidden in the back here. The x-axis home switch is set to C26, which is the blue wire on the bottom. The um, y-axis home switch is set to B24, which is my green wire here in the middle. And then um, the z-axis home is C23, which is this white wire here. So these four wires are the XYZ home switches and the emergency stop. This wire up here, which is on C6, controls the spindle go relay. You pull that to ground to enable the spindle go relay, and that's how I turn the spindle on and off. That wire does require a little bit of extra circuitry work. Um, it's not just a 0 to 5 volt signal. So this is the main power distribution board. Um, this big relay here is turned off by the emergency stop switch and that turns off power to just about everything. There's some fuses here and then this relay here, relay number two, that's the spindle go relay and that essentially turns on power to the spindle control board and that relay, um, the coil goes through the magnetic switch on the front so if the magnetic switch on the front, if the, the cover is lifted, that relay will not open um, and it goes to tw positive 24 volts. Now the negative side of it is tied to pin C6, and that's the pin you have to pull to ground if you want this relay to turn on. Um, and that yellow, the, the white wire up here goes over to the main board that connects that relay up. Now power from that relay goes out through this brown and blue connector, and that goes up to the spindle control board. This is the spindle control board. It takes in the AC power on the blue and the brown wire from the relay, 
and then it sends out power over the red and the black wire to the spindle motor. Motor, It's controlled via these two, the small red and small blue wires that go to the next move ST board and the the green, the, sorry, the blue goes to the spindle ground and the red goes to the spindle output. When I first started testing, that board was outputting an 11 volt voltage signal on this guy and that turned on the spindle um, controller board to full speed. After I was testing for a while, it stopped putting that out. I still don't know how to control the um, 0 to 12 or 0 to 10 volt signal on the next move ST board that will allow you to control the spindle speed. So all I can do is hotwire this and when I turn on the relay the spindle goes full blast which for such a small mill is probably fine. Um, so you can't just connect any old thing to these wires here um, because the reference on these voltages is closer to the 110 volt AC so you need an isolated DC supply to supply the voltage there. Now you can use this board without a connection there. Um, it's designed such that you can basically um, connect a potentiometer to these three items, these three pins. There's P1, P2, and P3. And um, you can dial it by hand. So P1 is ground or zero. P3 is plus 11 volts. And P2 is basically the control input. And so what I've been doing to get full speed is I simply take a jumper and I jumper P2 right to P3. And that basically means when the spindle go relay turns on, this thing will drive the spindle at full speed. Ideally, I really want to figure out how to get the signals from the next move ST board working coming out of this. I believe there's probably a pin somewhere that if I do PWM input to it, I can control the voltage 0 to 10 volts coming out of that red wire. And the nice thing about it is that the next move ST board has the correct isolated controller already built there. I could also purchase a uh, VFD controller that takes a PWM signal, goes through an isolated DC to DC converter to get a 12 volt signal and, and feeds into this, but that's 30 to 50 bucks to buy. Um, and so I'm hoping to use the one that came built into the mill. I just have to figure out which pin is the input for it. But for now, I can turn it on full speed and mill with it. Now the only other thing that I need to talk about is this wire coming from C6. All of my other wires just plug in to an input or an output pin on the breakout board and everything works fine. Because this wire is coming from the relay and the relay has a 24 volt coil, the positive side is connected to 24 volts and if you connect this negative side to something like ground, it'll turn the relay on. So you might think, well heck, I can just hook it into a pin and turn the relay on by pulling it down to ground. The problem is that pin, when you turn it high, only goes up to 5 volts. And so the difference between 5 volts and 24 volts is 19 volts, and that's still enough to turn the relay on. So if you plug this into any pin, it doesn't matter if it's high or low, the relay is just going to be on all the time. So you can make it go and hotwire it to always go. You might as well just plug it into a ground connection for that. But if you want to have programmatic control, you need to switch the current on and off. Um, and so there's two ways to do this. The way to do it if you're afraid of transistors is a small relay. You buy a little relay that has a 5 volt coil that you can just control from a pin and then that relay will switch this guy to ground or open the connection. I used a small switching transistor. This is a PN2222 NPN transistor. It's in low side switching. Um, and so basically what I have is the current flows into the collector on this transistor. The base of the transistor is wired through a 1 kilo ohm resistor to my pin 1 and the emitter of the transistor is wired into my ground connection. And basically what that does is if I start putting current into the base via that resistor it will conduct current from the collector out through the emitter and that turns on the relay. Um, it's worked great for me. I mean this little guy here is rated to you know several hundred milliamps and I believe the relay is only 20 when it's on although there's a little bit of surge current at the beginning. Um, but just a tiny little switching power transistor is all you need to turn this thing on and off. The point of the 1k resistor is to limit the amount of current that your pin is putting into the base. Um, and so I didn't bother putting it on a pref board or anything. I just you know kind of dead bugged everything together and hooked it up there. Um, when I do a permanent installation I might make that a little fancier or I might just throw some uh, hot glue on top of it and call it good. 
but that's all you need to turn the spindle on and off full speed um, and do the homing switches and the e-stop switch and it, basically at this point the mill is ready to mill things. Um, the only enhancement I'd like to be able to make is figuring out how to do a PWM 0 to 5 volt TLL input to the speed controller so I can actually control the speed of the spindle motor. As it turns out, that spindle does not have any type of feedback or optical encoder or anything on it. So basically, um, it'll just be an open loop control if I get that PWM working. One last thing I need to mention about the spindle motor is that it's kind of noisy from an electrical, electromagnetic interference standpoint. And some of the limit switch wires are basically routed right next to the spindle motor wires. So when the spindle is turned on, your limit switches will pick up intermittent noise. And this will basically throw limit switch errors in your software. Um, to get around this, all you have to do is turn on software, um, a, a time delay for a debounce on your switches. I had to use something about 12,000 nanoseconds. Um, uh, that's a 300 times 40 for those of you using, those of you using Mach 3. And so so if you turn on just software debouncing, everything will be fine.